Hey everybody, I'm Chris Blackshear with Horror Happy Hour. Uh, today I'm going to attempt to review Gaspar Noe's latest film, Enter the Void. Uh, and this is a, quite a surreal, just crazy experience. Uh, very epic filmmaking, uh, artistically done of course, uh, confusing, uh, very strange, interesting, uh, wild, definitely unlike anything you've probably ever seen. Uh, kind of love it, kind of hate it, uh, definitely didn't understand it totally. Um, I read somewhere uh, Mr. No said this film is not about someone who is killed um, and floats around and is reincarnated. Uh, that's not what this is about. So, so right there, I know I'm totally uh, disconnected from his true meaning because that's exactly what I thought it was about. But it is about uh, an orphan uh, named um, Oscar. He's an American. He's living in Japan. Uh, he makes a living selling drugs. Um, he has a sister that he's trying to make enough money so she can fly out and meet him. Well, uh, early on, about a half hour into the movie, Oscar gets shot and killed on a police uh, drug raid. I think uh, this takes place in Tokyo, where the I think the, the drug laws there are, are very strict. Um, anyway, he, he's killed, but he has this kind of out-of-body experience. I, I took it as his his soul leaving his body and going on a journey of some sort. Uh, most of the rest of the movie from there on in is just uh, Oscar searching, um, looking around the town, searching his uh, past and his and the present and possibly the future. He uh, his spirits kind of floating around just watching things like uh, the effect his death had on his friends and uh, his sister. Um, plus we learn a little bit about his past. Uh, his parents died in a horrific car accident. Uh, he was separated at a young age from his sister, the only person that he uh, truly cared about and loved as a young kid. The only, only family member he had left, they were separated. So anyway, uh, we kind of stumble around through uh, this spiritual journey. Um, this has all the typical Gaspar No uh, elements as far as uh, disturbing stuff goes. It has a lot of, uh, there's a lot of sex, uh, there's abortion, there's hints of incest, uh, a lot of drug use. Uh, this has so many crazy lights and flashing images. Um, I'm not sure if this accurately depicts Tokyo or if it's more just the drugs. I think uh, it's a little bit of both. I'm not sure there's quite so many crazy neon lights and glow sticks and all these quivering uh, lights and things in Tokyo, but with the, uh, with the drug use, um, we're, we're kind of getting uh, from that perspective, and it's just amazing. Very uh, very dazzling. It's kind of hypnotic in many ways. Uh, with all these lights jumping around, very, very artistically done. Um, but um, the weird thing about this film, I know all of Gaspar's other films, uh, they're very dark and disturbing. But this one, in, a, in some ironic way, I actually kind of left this film feeling uh, positive, kind of had a happy tone to it in a way. Uh, I know that sounds weird with all this had all this disturbing stuff going on, but it was almost like his spirit had escaped the uh, the uh, hard times in this world and has kind of risen above all the uh, the drama and everything, the chaos that uh, life might present. So in that in that sense, I, I kind of felt like he was rising above the uh, turmoil and the uh, difficult aspects of his life, all the tragedy and, and different things. Um, he kind of risen above and it, he's kind of at peace almost. Uh, so it, it seemed to me he was searching for uh, another uh, 
body or entity to be uh, reincarnated. Um, but I guess that wasn't truly the filmmaker's intention, so I'm kind of lost in that regard. So um, this isn't a film that will have a very broad appeal uh, to uh, casual moviegoers, I don't think. It is a very artsy film, uh, a lot of shaky cam stuff, so if you don't like the shaky cam, I definitely would avoid this film because it's just like uh, Irreversible and his, his other projects. Uh, but no, no, Gaspar No, the uh, director, had been working on this film. Uh, I think I read like 10 years, so it's, it's a very long project, uh, funded by the success that Irreversible uh, had. But uh, I know if you didn't like Irreversible, I, I would definitely stay away from this. I know I, I caught a lot of flack. I know on Amazon because I. I, re I regarded uh, Irreversible as a masterpiece, and some people, some trolls kind of gave me a hard time, but uh, like I said, this isn't a, a film that's going to appeal to everybody, but uh, I kind of loved it, I kind of hated it, I had mixed feelings, I think it's something that might grow on me with time, but uh, as for now, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, having, having mixed feelings on it, but uh, very visually it's, it's just dazzling. It was thought-provoking, I'll give it that. I, I kind of thought my, to myself about uh, different moments in my life about that I might uh, look over and remember if my body was floating, out, out, having an out-of-body experience. kind of makes you wonder about key, key points in your life that uh, would be memorable or, or uh, had some uh, profound um, meaning in your life. So that, that was pretty neat to think about that, but uh, other parts of the film were frustrating just because you didn't really know exactly where the movie's going. Uh, and then there was a lot of times where you felt like you were on drugs. There was lengthy uh, moments with the dazzling images, um, with the colors flashing and just weird objects going just wild, just a very psychedelic feeling, like a all-night rave party, perhaps, but uh, it, all in all, it's, it's definitely a different film, uh, one worth checking out for anyone who's an art art uh, fan, but um, I, right now I'd, I could only give it a probably a 6 out of 10. I'd love to rate it higher, but I just I, some, something I think would definitely grow on me with time. Uh, it's a movie I'm glad I've seen and I will revisit sometime in the uh, distant future. But uh, as for now, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. So anyway, I thank you for watching. I am Chris Blackshear with Horror Happy Hour. Neuter and spay your demons and keep your horror fictional. Thank you.